Thank you very much for being here and for this recording. Let's start with your passion, mm -hmm. solar energy, mm -hmm. but more in general, renewable energy. Mm -hmm. Why are they important? For, for the survival of the human race, it's vital. Um, we don't have any other option to, to, to create energy for ourselves, to, to live, to do the things we enjoy without being able to access a form of energy which does not negatively impact our planet. Uh, civilization yeah. has been able to achieve mm -hmm. um, degrees of improvement mm -hmm. in uh, both mechanizing work that was grueling and, and, and heavy mm -hmm. on individuals for mm -hmm. millennia, as well as aiming to, to literally build mm -hmm. Uh, things that we could only dream of yes. thanks to energy. Yes. Do you expect solar energy to do the same? Yeah, well, all, throughout history, we've always reached these, these thresholds, these crossing points from one form of energy to the next. So if we weren't cutting down trees and burning them with biomass, uh, we then discovered coal and creating coal with the negative consequences of that, with ne negative air pollution. Um, and even back, back in the Victorian times, they claimed that our civilization will collapse through running out of coal. Um, that didn't happen. We discovered oil and then gas and now nuclear, um, which has its, you know, we're here in Japan, we understand the negative consequences of long-term consequences of using nuclear energy. Um, solar energy is far easier to deploy en masse on a large scale because it's so, it's so it's, um, it can be delivered into, into precise locations. You don't need very large power stations with huge volumes of capital to build them. It can be scaled and, and deposited where it's required. It's, it's a distributed form of energy. That's right. We have uh, 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 residential solar, mm -hmm. commercial solar, mm -hmm. utility scale solar, yes. and it is decentralized yes. uh, where uh, rather than uh, pulling a billion dollars to, to, peel the ne to build the next uh, uh, great uh, carbon mm -hmm. or gas or nuclear plant, mm -hmm. uh, we can have Maybe the same amount of capital, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, all over all over the place. Yes. Uh, however, solar is also not uniformly available. It's, right? not, it's not a dis dispatchable form of energy. You can't mm -hmm. call upon it at will because it's only produced 12 hours a day on average. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's the it's not necessarily an issue. Um, in in fact, it's it's technically an advantage, particularly over other forms of renewable energy like wind energy, because you can predict exactly when that energy is going to occur and you know what the peak energy you're going to receive is because the, the sun only outputs a certain amount of energy so we know what its maximum is going to be and we know when it's going to occur um, to a very high level of precision. So all that's required then is some advanced battery storage systems and then you can capture this energy and then, then it's dispatchable, then the grid can call upon it. Um, solar energy can be broken down largely into three, three sectors as you, you just described, so residential, on roof, um, commercial industrial scale, which is on very large roof spaces powering industries, and then utility scale. Um, utility energy doesn't necessarily need storage. Um, you can have very advanced battery systems to provide peaking power um, to smooth out the spikes and the voltages on grids. Commercial industrial solar power is the sector we're focusing on because businesses require energy during the, during the daytime, usually with very large energy demands, and the energy demand of their, of a factory tends to match the load profile of a solar output. And that's the sector which is probably the most efficient, because to put solar panels in houses, you need a battery for it to make sense, unless you have a net metering program, but that's a, that's a different matter, that's a policy matter. But technically, if you're in a home and you're out in the day at work and your family at school or whatever, you need a battery for a solar plant really to make sense from a technical level. So therefore there is an inefficiency in that and that's why commercial industrial scale solar is, is, is the most, um, will have the most economic impact. Um, the technology of uh, photovoltaic solar panels has been invented in the 70s. Much earlier than that. It the was actually discovered, uh, the photovoltaic effect was discovered by Albert Einstein, well he got a Nobel Prize for that. And in fact, the semiconductor was discovered because of the photovoltaic effect. So we have semiconductors and processors and computers because we discovered the, the photocell first, not the other way around. And the technology has hardly moved since. I mean, we are getting more efficient at manufacturing them and the efficiencies have got somewhat incrementally improved, but it's the same 
basic. The element. principle is the it's same. Exactly the same. So uh, there is it is. It is the case, however, that uh, in the 70s mm -hmm. uh, there was the first deployment of of, uh, yeah, the, of first, the first the first commercial application yes. them, for space uh, and and we had uh, uh, prices in the hundreds uh, of, of dollars per uh, uh, per, per watt of per watt mm -hmm. and, and and now we are uh, at at uh, uh, you know we reduced this cost yeah uh, we're, we're, we're probably down to around the actual solar cell maybe down to around 20 or 30 cents, maybe even less just for the cell. Mm -hmm. um, this is several orders of magnitude um, efficiency on the manufacturing. Yes. This, is, this is because of economies of scale, also improvements of, of manufacturing, which the, the two things are related. And, and, and today, in more and more areas of the world, uh, uh, solar energy is the winning form of energy in terms mm -hmm. of, of, of cost, right? In the UK right now, which is not known for its sun, they have now commissioned a solar power plant with storage without subsidy in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So that's an economically viable power plant with solar power and storage now built in a place that isn't even good for, for sunlight. So that shows you that that technology when applied in a sunny country like South Africa is the winning formula. And, and this is only going to improve further in the future. So uh, if we achieve that kind of threshold, there's no turning back. Uh, this have, is we, going we, to we be have, the it's, it's, uh, it, The solar energy industry refers to this as the silent revolution, because most people don't know how far it has already gone and how good the technology is. Because to cite or reference a statistic about solar energy from five years ago is no longer relevant, but people frequently do. People say, oh, solar energy is too expensive or it's too inefficient. And I'm like, have you received a quotation for a solar energy system yet? because the, the levelized cost of, of solar energy is now the cheapest form of energy on the planet in many locations on Earth. And, and, and this is uh, um, accelerating in terms of deployment mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of uh, bids mm -hmm. uh, for uh, various installations. Mm -hmm. uh, do you foresee uh, a sizable percentage of our energy needs to mm -hmm. be satisfied by solar mm -hmm. anytime soon? Well, Saudi Arabia has set a target of being almost exclusively solar powered in the next 20 years. Um, Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, they're targeting to install a 1.2 gigawatt solar plant and for which they've achieved a two cent per kilowatt hour price, which is uh, ludicrously low. Um, so that, that's what you can do on a very, very large scale. And, and uh, these two countries that you, or locations you refer to, mm -hmm. are the world capitals of, of oil. They are indeed. So if they are betting on solar, then everybody else should, uh, at even a larger degree, well, should I think, as well. I think I mean, those are two countries known for that oil. Um, Shell Oil, Royal Dutch Shell, predict that the world will be 50% solar powered by the end of this century and that's Shell Oil. I'm a bit more optimistic than that. I think we can solar power the planet maybe in the next decade because that is the rate of, of increase. I mean, in the last decade, um, we have installed 300 gigawatts of solar energy, which is 300 nuclear power stations worth of energy generation built in 10 years. And that's growing exponentially. Plot that forward another 10. I think we could have the majority of the planetary energy supply being sourced directly from the sun in the next 10 years. And, and that has a ripple effect on, on, on many applications uh, in our households uh, where we can substitute uh, gas uh, stoves with, with uh, induction mm -hmm. stoves mm -hmm. uh, for, for cooking or in uh, industry and agriculture mm -hmm. and, and of course transportation mm -hmm. where electric cars uh, and electric trucks yes. are now being uh, uh, not only sold or proposed but they are really revolutionizing mm -hmm how we think about these Indeed. activities. Indeed, um, so the, the electric car is a, is a portable battery. Uh, so the, you, you must have seen in some locations in, in San Francisco, for example, they have very large car canopies, which are actually solar powered canopies above the, the parking lots. Uh, so we're very near to the point where we can have charging stations installed at every car parking slot. So when you park your car to go to work, it's being charged. But at the same time, when you take your car home, you can then use the energy from your battery to power your home when you're at home. Mm -hmm. and, and the electricity in the evening is the most expensive and it's also when the solar energy is not being produced. So you can bottle your solar energy when you're at work, take that energy 
home with you and then power your house with you, power your house for your, your cooking stoves in the evening. That's possible now. In fact, I would be surprised if there are people doing that already. So um, the, the origin of the energy and the way it is collected and stored and transported and reused and reallocated is going to have ripple effects in the transformation of our socio-economic organization. Mm -hmm. um, rather than talking about the centralized energy, we are talking about the decentralized energy. Yeah. Uh, rather than having a, a source that requires a huge capital mm -hmm. investment mm -hmm. uh, at any scale uh, mm -hmm. corresponding to your available capital, yep. uh, that your needs of energy can be mm -hmm. uh, achieved. Mm -hmm. And then given the lifetime of these installations, you can pay off your capital installation and yes. then basically um, enjoy free energy. Mm. I've always um, referred to solar energy as a democratic form of, of electricity supply because with a, a nuclear power station, it's almost like a dictatorship. You are dictated upon where you get your energy from and the decision makers behind those projects are fixing future generations energy costs into the future. So yeah, therefore they, they've done a disservice to future generations by fixing that supply. With solar power, it's up to the individual to, to choose and elect that they want to become solar powered and they therefore have lowered their ongoing energy costs because the, the energy has been purchased up front um, and therefore there's a reduced cost of that into the future. Um, the other element is education. Um, once you own a solar power plant, you have a, a degree of energy literacy that is made possible. So when you have energy on tap from a nuclear power station or a coal power station or whatever, you receive a bill once a month, but you have very little real understanding of how hard was it to produce a kilowatt hour? How valuable is this? Am I being wasteful with my energy? And as soon as you have a solar power system on the roof of your home, you start to become much more aware of what it takes to create. How many kilowatt hours am I using? What's my peak demand of my home? And those kind of questions you don't ask yourself unless it's tangible, unless you can feel it, unless you've got a real um, positive benefit uh, through saving energy and understanding it. That's what solar power can achieve. And when you centralise something, you lose all of that positive social impact and behavioural change. You are the founder of uh, the Sun Exchange and the chief uh, executive officer mm -hmm. uh, of this mm -hmm. uh, solar uh, energy company. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me about the Sun Exchange. What is your business model? Okay, the Sun Exchange enables anybody in the world to purchase and then lease on a solar panel, which get installed into projects in the sunniest locations on Earth. And when I mean projects, I mean put onto the roof of schools, community uh, systems, and factories, who then get to benefit from solar energy at no upfront cost, and the lease payments that they're making for using that system get distributed back to the owners of those solar panels through our platform, deep streamed in digital currency. And, and that is, that is the, the, the ultimate premise. So the, the, the prospect of, of putting a solar panel on the roof of my own home, just because it's the only option, uh, is about as advanced as making a phone call with two cups and a piece of string. Um, just because I have a roof doesn't mean I have to put my solar panels there. If it's not a very good roof space, maybe I shouldn't put solar panels there. Maybe I should put them where, where it's better off such as on a roof space in Africa, for example, where there's twice as much sunshine and the embedded carbon in the electricity grids in Africa are double that of, of the European grids because they're still running from coal. So from a, a planetary perspective, from a, a climate change preventation um, perspective, it makes sense to put solar panels in Africa because you save four times the carbon emissions. And that was my, my original driver was to address climate change. I'm a, I'm a climate change scientist through my academic background. So it now seems pointless to put solar panels in the UK when someone in the UK can now use the Sun Exchange to deploy a solar panel onto the roof of a commercial project where they've got a reliable energy user that's going to pay them and they receive it in the world's most sought after currency uh, being Bitcoin at the moment. Uh, we can change the cryptocurrency, it's just that is the most popular one. Uh, but it enables us to stream monetary value globally using one financial system which up to this point has not been possible, especially when it comes down to the resolution of payments that we allow. Um, we allow our customers to buy a single solar cell 
in a project. What is the, the, the price of that uh, today? Uh, so so what I mean, is, this is a crowdfunding platform? This is not a crowdfunding platform mm -hmm. um, because the, uh, the owner, actually, the people participating in a, in a project actually own the solar cell. It's their property. It's got their name on it. They have a certificate of ownership and the income they receive from their solar cell is directly proportional and measured from the electrical production of that solar cell. So it's not a, a financing, it's actually a, it's a, it's a buy to lease solar panel. Mm -hmm. um, you can think of the Sun Exchange like you would think of a well-known ride sharing service, um, whereby um, ride sharing websites and accommodation sharing websites, that website doesn't own the accommodation, they don't own the cars, what they do is provide infrastructure to connect people that have an empty room in their home to someone that's looking for someone to stay, or connect someone that does have a vehicle with someone that's looking to use a vehicle. We used to connect people that are looking for somewhere to put a solar panel with, with people who have space for solar panels, and we provide the infrastructure to connect the two. That's how to think of what we do. And uh, so uh, what is the minimum investment that uh, I can enter into the you, system? You can buy a solar cell, which is a, a, a silicon wafer about that large, um, with a peak power output. They're usually around four and a half watts. That costs in the Sun Exchange around six US dollars per solar cell. And the, the, the income that will earn you is equivalent to around a 10% internal rate of return. And you receive that over, over the 20 year lease period. Now, if you compare that to how much it used to cost to go solar, so in, in the olden days, uh, to put a, a solar power plant on the roof of your home would have cost about $10,000. But you can't go any smaller than that. You can't um, install a fraction of a solar plant on your roof. That do doesn't work. You'd still need the cables and the racking and the inverters and the labor and the lost time to do so. So we've reduced the cost of going solar to anybody by three orders of magnitude. It used to cost $10,000 to go solar, now it costs less than $10 to go solar. And that solar cell is serviced, maintained and insured through the Sun Exchange. And of course, after somebody enters uh, uh, the platform, mm -hmm. they can always uh, buy additional cells, uh, either Correct. in the same project or in another project. Correct. So the, the point of this platform is that you can actually purchase solar cells across multiple projects because there is certainly a social impact to this. Um, in that um, you can solar power a school or a factory or, or indeed a microgrid with a village or a community that doesn't yet have access to any energy, let alone solar energy. So individuals can now feel they're doing very much social good by deploying their solar panels to where the energy is actually benefited and appreciated. The uh, starting point for the Sun Exchange was uh, South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you can actually uh, power uh, solar projects uh, anywhere uh, where they uh, make sense, right? Yeah, so um, it's very capital intensive for the finance for a solar power plant. So you need a, a financial system which enables you to have a lot of money up front and then over a very long time period earn a low to medium return. That's not attractive to professional investors, it's not attractive to banks, especially when you're talking about the size of project that we're dealing with. The projects that we're dealing with are in this thing that's called the funding gap, which is systems below one megawatt, so below typically one million dollars, and above ten thousand dollars. That's the commercial sector, and it's that sector which is the most required in developing countries because that's what is the lifeblood of economies. People need to manufacture, they need to connect, um, they need to read and research and, and, and teach, and this is the energy that makes the most difference to society. And it's those solar power plants which are being unfunded in developing countries because it's too little money to interest very large financial institutions and it's too much money for those organisations to fund their own systems. So it relies on someone coming up with an innovative, innovative approach to solar finance, such as the Sun Exchange, to democratise the financing of those systems. Um, and uh, you are now uh, already uh, expanding internationally. Your next mm -hmm. project is uh, outside of South Africa. Correct. So we've uh, now setting up a, an entity in Dubai. Uh, Dubai uh, is, as everyone knows, it's the, they, they achieve a lot in a very short period of time and they do what they say. Um, so a few years ago they said they're going to install a monorail citywide and they went and built it. Um, they said they wanted to build islands that, in the shape of the world out at sea. They went and built it. Now the Dubai government wish to become 9% solar powered by 2020.
They also want to become the first government powered by blockchain technology by 2020. So we presented to uh, the Smart Dubai office as a, a government entity, uh, presenting our solution for blockchain solar finance in Dubai, and we, we won the, their global blockchain challenge. So we see the United Arab Emirates as a really hot spot for, for doing what we're doing because it's a very advanced, innovative um, method of getting solar deployed rapidly in, into cities, especially in cities where there are a lot of people living in apartments that would like to own solar panels but can't. Through Sun Exchange, you can own a solar panel on someone else's roof. It's just leased out to someone else. So all those thousands or tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people living in apartments in Dubai can now own a solar panel. And the Dubai government are encouraging people to own solar panels under what's called the Shams Initiative. But now through Sun Exchange, all those individuals that previously powerless, to, literally powerless to own a solar panel, now can own one. So that's why we see Dubai as a really major hub for us to service not just that city, but cities like it uh, throughout the, the Middle Eastern region. Uh, another initiative uh, that the Sun Exchange is launching uh, uh, in very these uh, uh, days and weeks mm -hmm. uh, is um, a, a, a cryptographic uh, token, mm -hmm. uh, the Sunex, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, enable people to participate in a in a different way. Correct. And uh, this token is going to uh, have uh, both uh, an opportunity for Sunex to finance uh, mm -hmm. its expansion mm -hmm. uh, and its uh, aims, mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, for the members of the Sunex uh, platform yeah. to earn uh, benefits from the ownership of the token. Yeah, the SunX token is a loyalty program. It's it's like Air Miles, but it's actually an ERC20 cryptocurrency. It's, so it's, it is a cryptocurrency, but it, we've created it as a rewards token. We've created it to incentivize our users to make smart decisions when using our platform to create a diverse and socially impact portfolio. Um, so we've created levels of users. Um, the more SunX you accumulate, the higher your level. The higher your level, the higher the lease rental payments you receive on the, on the platform. You get bonus lease rental payments and you also get discounts on, on future purchases. Now that, um, that bonus doesn't just apply to future purchases, that bonus applied to all your existing purchases. So the value of the SunX token is almost infinite because there's no limit to the number of solar cells you can own, so therefore there's no limit to the actual worth of, of having a high SunX level. The only slight downside to that is that it takes time to accumulate because there's only a certain number of projects coming on every, every so often. So it will take regular users some time to, to, to level up their account to the, high, the highest levels. Um, the highest level is, is, is called Supernova. Um, we've named them after the stages of star formation and the sizes of stars. So we start on hydrogen, that's the base level. And then once you've bought your first solar cell, you, you enter the, the, the period of cloud formation. Um, and that's when you start to get bonuses and, and, and discounts on future purchases. Now, for, for the benefit of, of people that wish to participate, they can, we're now offering the opportunity for people to pre-buy the tokens. So you can immediately enter the Sun Exchange ecosystem at the highest user levels by pre-purchasing the tokens. So it's almost like a shortcut to maximizing the benefit of the utilization of, of the Sun Exchange platform. Um, this token is going to be available broadly, uh, just like mm -hmm. uh, other uh, cryptographic tokens. Yeah. Uh, and um, they will engender uh, a virtuous circle mm -hmm. where people who are interested uh, in the Sun Exchange mission mm -hmm. uh, are going to be able to support it. Yeah. Sun Exchange is going to accelerate its uh, expansion mm -hmm. uh, and uh, its uh, financial uh, uh, availability. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, the benefit of the token is going to accrue to the uh, members of the platform Correct. who uh, have shown with their action that mm -hmm. they are they are backing these projects. Uh, co correct. So the the original vision of Sun Exchange was to create. Um, a solar-powered financial system that streams monetized sunshine 24-7, 365. So in order to achieve that, our users need to locate solar panels on all faces of the earth. So they're always receiving monetized sunshine. For that, we need to scale our business. And it's gonna take a lot of time to, to do that if we do this um, in, in an organic fashion. Um, but we want to achieve a lot more faster than that, and it's entirely possible. And for those that believe that we can solar power this planet faster, this is the way to do it. Because the, the SunX tokens which are purchased, not only does that entitle you to significant tangible benefits when utilizing our platform, you're also supporting this, supporting this mission to solar power the planet. 
Um, and if you ever wish to um, sell your SunX tokens in the future, you can. It's a cryptocurrency. It's going to be listed on cryptocurrency exchanges, so you can sell your token. It's a cryptocurrency. Um, and for example, I mean, if you've um, accumulated your SunX tokens, naturally you, you wish to, uh, to to sell them for whatever reason. Someone who's looking to join the Sun Exchange and maximise the benefit through it is, is would be there looking to, to purchase the tokens off you. It's an actual. It's 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 a token of utility, and it enables you to maximise the utility of the Sun Exchange. So uh, wonderful, and uh, thank you very much for explaining the. Uh, reasons and the uh, uh, very important um, starting point for um, solarizing our, our planet uh, and uh, the intriguing and uh, uh, very uh, advanced business model for Sun Exchange I, I, and SunX the token. Thank you. I'd like to embellish a little on, on the reasons for requiring solar energy because I, I, I did state that it's to save the planet, but that sound, could sound trite or mm -hmm. hyperbolic. Mm -hmm. But I mean, let's just look at some of the things that are happening on Earth right now, which prove that this is this is the reality, and it's and it's going to be the new normal. So the oxygens are becoming deoxygenated because of higher um, levels of, of, of acidification in the oceans, which is killing off um, corals. Corals supply oxygen into the into the atmosphere. Um, in fact, all, all microorganisms in the oceans supply oxygen. The, the people say the forests of the Earth lungs. The forests are not, the oceans are the Earth's lungs. Mm -hmm. And the more we heat up and acidify the oceans through carbon dioxide um, levels in the atmosphere, the worse our oceans are going to become. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kill off huge different levels of ecosystems in the oceans, which is devastating, absolutely devastating to humanitarian survival. So many countries rely on fisheries, not just fisheries, but every, the whole food chains rely on life in the oceans. So it's, it's not, and it's not just the oceans either. I mean, look at the cryosphere, the ice sphere. So gla glacial melt in most countries on Earth supply um, water and irrigation for crops. If the Earth heats up beyond where it is, beyond where it is now, most of the glaciation is going to disappear, and then mountain regions and, and countries and high high latitudes are going to lose their source of water. That's another another thing. And you can keep going through the different spheres around the planet, and it's all pointing to a really really dangerous direction. Um, the West Antarctic ice sheet is now breaking up. The Larsen B ice shelf has just f um, collapsed. It's the size of the state of Delaware. It's just broken off. It's 400,000 cubic kilometers of ice. Um, fortunately, because it's already in the ocean, it won't actually change the sea surface level. But what it was doing was buttressing all of the ice shelf and the sheet on the Antarctic continent. That has now got no barrier. So that can now purge into the ocean and that has the potential to raise sea levels by by meters uh, this is really dangerous stuff we're, we're toying with here and the, the more we we move forward with fossil fuels in claiming that we don't know for sure that these impacts are going to happen the more more da damaging those impacts are going to become i always liken it to uh, developing a tumor um, and then carrying on smoking because you can say that you don't know for sure that the, the tumor is related to the smoking but the chances are that it probably is, and therefore cut the smoking, sort out the tumour, and get on with healthier activities. Um, that's, that's what I see, that what we should be doing with our approach to climate change. It's the precautionary principle. But it's beyond, beyond precautionary now, because we can see the negative consequences of using fossil fuels, mm -hmm. um, not just um, from environmentally, but socio-politically as well. And, and that's, that's the world that we can fix by, by transitioning to clean energy. And uh, uh, Sun Exchange is also a sound financial investment. So we are aligning mm -hmm. our ecological uh, existential interests with our financial interests. Through Sun Exchange, you're buying a, a, a silicon wafer which has got a, a power guarantee of 25 years. I mean, that's that your your investment is backed by a solar panel with a 25 year guarantee. I mean, that's that's pretty sound a sound investment. That's why half a trillion dollars has been spent on solar panels over the past 10 years because it's a sound investment. And we allow people to diversify where their solar panels are put over, over multiple projects. Thank you very much. Thank you.